Hi Aquarius, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Chandler. This is your intuitive message for this week. This may work for you if you have a sun, moon, rising, or Venus in the sign of Aquarius. And of course, cross watchers, feel free to switch up or reverse the roles. If their energy is resonating, but maybe the characteristics should be switched, um, then please feel free to do so. Okay, take what resonates, leave the rest. Of course, this is a general reading. It's not going to resonate with everyone. If it does, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me tremendously, and I would love to see you back uh, again next week. Um, I'm not currently offering personal readings. However, if you find this reading resonates, please feel free to follow the link in the description box below to the almost personal extended that I provide on Vimeo. Initially, Aquarius, it did take me a little bit uh, of time to sink into your energy. I do feel a bit of confliction, okay? Maybe in a decision that needs to be made, Libra got a very similar energy initially. Um, we'll see, of course, what the cards have to say, but my intuition sort of tells me that you may be tempted to make an impulse decision this week. Um, something is definitely brewing in your mindscape, okay? And I don't want you to make an impulse decision without um, knowing all the facts or thinking things through. I want you to have mindful awareness this week with that kind of energy surrounding you. And I also want you to know that you are not a know-it-all, though you may think you are, okay, this week. There's definitely an energy of feeling like you kind of know it all, maybe an error in judgment, so... Let's just practice mindful awareness. Let's try to see the bigger the bigger picture. That should help loosen those um, conflicting energies surrounding you. Yeah, very high intellectual energy here. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. Let's see what the cards have to say. Okay, <laughs> we have the death card. We are still in Scorpio season. Of course, when we see death, it could be Scorpionic or Cancerian energy as for me as a reader. Um, it is the number 13, which is a four. This is ultimately helping transform an unstable situation and try to reestablish some kind of foundation in your life. I can't help but be drawn to this card specifically, um, representing a sort of butterfly effect, okay? So something that may be very small, this could have already happened or could be happening this week, may change the course of this transformation for you, okay? It's something of a butterfly effect I'm getting specifically for some of you guys. It could be very subtle but um, substantial, this kind of transformation. It could very well be emotional as well, as I don't think that you're necessarily taking action this week, um, or at least in the beginning of the week as, as we're recording this, right? This is still in contemplation, uh, in contemplation of it. As I'm... As I'm, uh, you know, talking, Aquarius, <laughs> I'm getting this real bad throat chakra block. There could be some block on your communication or the information that's available to you. This is why I think you need to wait. It could feel as if you're in a bit of a stagnation or um, just internal processing, okay, integration mode in the beginning of the week because you know that something is ending or something has shifted and you're simply waiting on taking that action, but you realize there is a bit of a butterfly effect already happening in your, in your life or around you. This is ultimately an opportunity to reinvent yourself. We have intuition coming up on the bottom of the deck, which is the High Priestess. And though I typically don't take this card in reverse, I can't help but be drawn to its reversal because the High Priestess in reverse is actually much more significant to truth that has already been revealed. So you could be literally ending something or this shift in you emotionally could have occurred because of some information that will be or has been exposed, it's now available, you're now um, seeking more um, from this source, it's maybe coming through your intuition or through the dreamscape. Um, things that once were hidden and unavailable to you are now available and potentially right in front of you for your, for your viewing and um, use. 
So as I put down the cards, we have destiny, which is the wheel of fortune and material and spiritual prosperity. So ultimately, I think that this is going to pose as a really good transformation for you, Aquarius. I almost said Scorpio. Whatever you're putting an end to now is giving life or giving way to a new cycle that is wanting to begin, okay? I know I said that kind of backwards. This could kind of feel backwards for you. Um, I do feel that confliction again, okay, as these opposing energies are so very different. This one is all about endings, death of desires, uh, hidden truths being revealed, something that may have been long term, um, a bit of a foundational energy within you or within your surroundings, maybe even in your relationships, has now just shifted. I don't want to say it's demolished or destroyed. It's a much more gentle energy than that, but it is substantial. It does have a butterfly effect. You are reinventing yourself currently, though no action or nothing on the surface may have really changed. This is this is so very obvious to me. This energy of the Wheel of Fortune, it's like with this death, with this ending, will come this rebirth. And I want to say, Aquarius, that you may have had um, a very frustrating 2019. We're nearing the end of Jupiter in Sagittarius, okay? And this sort of screams to me, Jupiter in Sagittarius. This is, of course, the Jupiterian, Sagittarian, um, major arcana, okay, of the deck. And then this is the Six of Pentacles. So working on establishing fairness, equality, integrity, reliability, responsibility, um, strong assessment over your finances right now. You're looking at how to make this reciprocity more even, how to establish yourself um, and have more consistency in your business, in your financial sector, but also just in your confident confidence level, maybe even in love and relationships. This has everything to do with things that have felt stagnant and maybe a little unfair are now beginning to move. And this movement is all happening because of what? This little this little shift, but very substantial and, um, you know, revealing sort of phase you're going through. This integrity that's being integrated is changing a very large picture here in your life. So with the Wheel of Fortune, I feel like you guys have a lot of self-awareness right now. Of course, as the Wheel of Fortune turns, you're able to see the broader scope of the cycle that you're exiting as well. Okay, so as you, you know, transit cycles in life, there will be relationships that start and everything's super good and you feel super happy and it's just the way things are supposed to be, right? Or, you know, you start a job and it's like everything you've wanted and all of the desires are coming to fruition with little to no effort, right? You just, you just have to show up basically for them to fall into place. And then as you get going, the cycle turns and as you're at the bottom, you have no idea where you're going to go. You're not satisfied with where this cycle has taken you. You know, there's challenges, things that you couldn't see are coming up now. Um, people are not so supportive of you or you're not having the best of luck. There could be also excess, you know, trying to fill, fill, fulfill desires that you thought was going to be um, what you were signing up for in the beginning. You know, there's this thing of like, this cycle that you are exiting didn't take you where you wanted to go. And now you're just seeing the bigger picture of all the lessons that have been giving to, given to you through this chapter. You know, and so you're here now and you're at this pinnacle of awareness, maybe reviewing a lot of these lessons. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of these lessons may have given you either lack mentality or excess um, mentality, you know, never having enough or kind of feeling like, is it good enough energy? And with these lessons, you're, you're kind of reestablishing um, your standards you're kind of reestablishing your standards, um, how you approach social situations may be changing, how you interact with people may be changing, um, definitely setting up um, more healthy boundaries, it seems. You know, I think that this is really a good energy for where we are with Jupiter leaving Sagittarius. Um, I, be, I believe that this transit happens on December 2nd. 
so we still have a week or two left of having Jupiter in Sagittarius, which is one of the luckier um, transits in 12 years. You know, it's, it's one of the most auspicious energies as Jupiter will be in its home sign. But, again, you know, again, there could have been real strong lessons this year about, you know, um, just kind of wanting to expand, feeling fixed, feeling very stuck and stagnant. But instead of this expansion, you know, a lot of us have also received a lot of things that felt very restricting. There was almost a, a harder focus on the things that were immovable, restrictions, things that weren't working or didn't allow us to really flow or grow within them. And so I think there's a, this, that very strong focus on the things that really aren't working this week for you. Um, which puts the grander perspective of where you want to go um, in alignment with you in the same sense. So I hope I'm making sense to you guys. I know that I'm just sort of rambling about astrology, but this is so connected, so connected for you. So let's keep going. Show me what else I need to see for Aquarius. Yeah, very highly intellectual energy. I think that you guys are really trying to think big picture. Um, some of you will be getting what's fair. Some of you will be getting what's, what's right for you, what you've worked for. And it may have been a really long process to, to get here. It may have been like an all year type of battle for you to feel like you're finally gaining some of these rewards. Oh yeah foundations and achievements you guys you have really auspicious energy um two number fours firstly okay so listen while this energy comes beneath transformation a lot of you are you know shifting dynamics within your interpersonal relationships now this is not an interpersonal sort of energy but because you are i will i'll say this again because this, you know, Jupiter and the energy that we've sort of been going back and forth about, this bigger picture um, is being focused upon, you'll find the, the recent shifts in your life may have to do with the people who are closest to you, right? Starting in and then working its way out. So this week you could actually find, you know, your interpersonal relationships shifting dynamically because you are shifting dynamically within. Very similar sort of... Um, you know, uh, micro macro energy happening. So the people who have been with you for a long time, the people who you've been in touch with, um, you know, the people in your family, there's a real shift here. There's a, there's an energy of foundationalism, um, sort of being uprooted this week in, in a sense. Um, you might be, you might be really questioning whether these people are ultimately going to be there or are good for you long term, long term. Um, this could involve an earth sign. We have a lot of Taurus. We have, um, Virgo and Capricorn. We also have the, the Taurus major arcana of the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. So this could be, you know, transformations in marriages, transformations in divine unions, things that will ultimately um, need a sort of revision to serve your highest good in the future. Um, this may involve, you know, more reciprocity, compassion, or compromise, okay? There's an energy here of that. So again, in the first of the week, this is, I think, where your mind space is. You know, you're conflicted about a lot of things here, Aquarius, during this reading, but I think if you just narrow it down to either home and family, um, you know, success and career, and also interpersonal relationships, either the ones with your significant other and the one with yourself, I see. We can sort of narrow it down to, all right, this is going to be good for you. This is not going to be good for you. But I, I really kind of feel like you may need to compartmentalize your ideas this week because you're thinking so very far in the future and you have this um, sort of desire to create that momentum, maybe take a risky move or act impulsively. And I kind of want you to just 
realize that maybe the the experiences that you are seeing on a on a physical level or in the manifested realm are in fact a reflection of what's happening with you within you and that maybe the physical realm needs a little bit more time to catch up maybe you need to be a little bit more patient with the physical realm um, these things are trying to solidify for the long term i see it could be a very big cycle that you are entering maybe for the next four or five years. And so it's important that you make these decisions uh, and changes in stride as you are ready. Because if you do make an, an, a decision and still feel slightly conflicted about it, then I don't think that it's ruminated enough. Okay, we still have a few weeks to really decide a, a, about this before the new year begins. So this week, I think you're just sort of narrowing in onto those changes that you would like to make. And for what reasons? There's something within you that is shifting and, and it just doesn't seem to be aligning with some things in your current reality. So be patient here. This transformation, I, I really think, is a long-term kind of thing and you are in the midst of reinventing yourself and so you want to really focus on those better qualities. You really want to hone in on that higher level of vibrational you know, energy. One thing that Jupiter will gift us in Sagittarius is the ability to be high vibrational, raise your vibration, and there will be people in your life that are not high vibrational. There will be people in your um, social dynamics, in your family, in your relationships that are not high vibrational, okay? So you, you are definitely looking at those people, but with a sort of mindful awareness, you know, not allowing them to really affect you. It just seems like you're you're putting up very strong boundaries because you value your confidence. Um, you value, obviously, your money, your ability to make money. Your confidence needs to be high. And so I think there's something there about, about if people affect you negatively um, or if someone is critiquing you and you can kind of see that jealousness coming out of them, if you can kind of see that um, unhelpful advice being given. Um, there could be conceit or envy surrounding you. These people, I think, notice that you are leveling up. These people will probably be able to sense, okay, that you're coming into some success. So make sure to sort of pinpoint those renegades. That's a real strong energy right now. And of course, this Hierophant, you know, so silently on the bottom of the deck representing this foundations and achievements is really focused on things that will last. Okay, this is wisdom accrued only after years of hardship or, um, you know, a lot of strife, a phase of strife. Okay, this is what's given is, is a bit of wisdom for you to work off of so that you don't encounter these same struggles again. So I know I'm talking a lot, you guys, and I, I, I think that some of you may want to rewatch this video because there's a lot of information that you could actually pick apart and, and look into yourself. I think that some of you are, are very affected by astrology right now, and I think a lot of you have been affected in Scorpio season on an emotional level. Um, and this is helping guide you, okay? It really is, but you, you kind of do have to sink into those emotions a little bit and maybe go through the process of being uncomfortable, especially as it applies to your relationships, right? Because you're, you're a very social sign and, you know, you may rely heavily on the opinions of others. Um, and, you know, if, if anything in your relationships kind of feels unstable and there's a lack of understanding there, um, we're in an energy that, that will test those relationships on an extreme level, okay? I would say that the relationships that aren't meant to last won't, okay? Um, there's going to be, and I'm just getting this here, a lot of people coming out of the woodwork, these, these renegades here that try to get on the bandwagon of success when they see someone raising their energy, um, it's sort of this reptilian mindset, you know, and, and you can, it's just going to be really obvious to you, I think, Aquarius, where, where you want to go based off of where you have been and people who are, um, you know, kind of fading out of your reality or, or just sort of wanting to take, okay, more than they give, um, 
these these people who can't change, they're sort of in this reptilian, very cyclical, um, stuck mindset, okay? They're, they may be very rigid in their belief systems. They may be very unwilling to listen and um, be very power hungry or egoic, um, very focused on themselves, what I need, what what's good for me, you know, give, give, give kind of people. And I really think that some of you are going to be encountering those people and just really seeing their sort of lower vibrational reptilian ways. Um, so I don't know who needed to hear that, you guys, but there's definitely that reptilian, lower mind, um, lower vibe energy surrounding you. And, and for, for at least some of you, okay, I won't say for all of you, but there will be people who come out of the woodwork and this is because they see you raising your vibration. That's sort of the point I was making. So rest and rejuvenate. Rest and rejuvenate, I mean a very simple card. This is the Four of Swords in a um, Minor Arcana. We have a lot of fours coming out for you, oh, you Aquarius. So you know, it, this is sort of the reward of Jupiter as this year rounds out. Um, you're being given, you're being given long-term success if you've been working on this for a long time, right? It's kind of that give and take that we were talking about. So if you felt really stuck, in whatever chapter or life cycle this is, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's your career, you're feeling a very strong impulse to change things right now because you feel those rewards coming to you. But I would instead suggest this rest and rejuvenate. Instead of acting upon things, maybe in a physical way, by actually leaving your position that you've been in for a long time, or by, you know, abruptly uh, breaking up with someone or in this electric and kind of fiery explosion, just making an impulse decision or being too reactionary, I would instead tell you that you've been already at this for a long time. There's really no need to do something drastic or overnight. If you gamble or take a risk right now, it, it, it kind of has more of an error in judgment energy it kind of has more of, um, you know, this uh, rose-colored glasses or maybe just a know-it-all kind of energy. So try not to make impulse decisions, essentially. Take this time to rest and rejuvenate and really collect all of your thoughts, um, especially if it has to do with something as grand as this Wheel of Fortune energy, this entirely new cycle. Because again, when we have a number 10, broken down, we have a number one. So this is a new beginning for you. It's a new beginning that may affect your relationships, your home and family in the future. We have four fours on the table. So this is for a long time, maybe four years. Okay. I mean, there's time to think about a decision as big as this one, potentially. Now, I don't know if it's just one decision you're making, but in a grander scheme of things, again, you're, you're shifting and leveling up on very many levels, I would like to say, on, on a lot of different pages in your life. And so it's going to take time to really address each one potentially. You can't just make one decision to fix it all. Um, it doesn't work like that, especially, you know, as we have Mars, uh, I think it's Mars op opposite Uranus and Uranus is in Taurus. Mars, I think is in Scorpio. So there's an energy here of you know, what it, what it needs, what needs to be given in order to be received. Um, this is talking about loss, death, endings, um, desire, um, you know, beauty, uh, things that will nourish you long term. But again, in that sort of opposite side, we're seeing the bigger picture of I can't have both. Okay, that's sort of where that reptilian energy comes in is like, I can't have both, right? So you're going to need to sort of do this dance a little bit this week to weigh out, um, is this good enough, right? After all of the struggles that I've made in this area of my life, in my career, or in this relationship, or in this family dynamic, or, you know, um, you know, whatever it may apply to in my finances, with my business, is it good enough, right? Or what do I have to give up in order for it to be better? Okay, that's really sort of the bottom line that I'm seeing. Base chakra comes up very last. Okay, so eventually, you guys, a lot of you are going to be looking at moving. 
a lot of you are going to have sort of a regrounding moment with this energy. I just see like a total root down of what you've been trying to process and contemplate and shift and change and so over, sort of over intellectualize. The foundation of what is physical and possible actually has a chance to catch up eventually. Now, it may not be this week. Of course, we all work through energy differently. But if you're receiving this message, know that it is somewhere in your future, maybe over the next two weeks, because of what energy that we're receiving in the new year. A lot of things that are not supposed to go with us are just going to simply fall away. And so you may wake up one day and just kind of realize like, you're in a new cycle. You are, you're starting from scratch. This is this is the bare bones of of self awareness. This is um, where everything begins, essentially. And so you really do have a lot of physical momentum. There's a lot of um, physical awareness. You guys could be focusing much more on your health. Okay, as we are looking at material and spiritual prosperity, this is the result of you taking your physical and emotional health much more seriously, right? When we set up healthy boundaries, we tend to have a much firmer foundation. Um, so this is ultimately what I see for you guys. I see that your confidence level is rising. I see that you have sort of managed to integrate these ideas in a very seamless sort of flowing way which is hard for you guys I think especially with the energies that we're receiving but you're sort of reconnecting with a part of yourself that isn't so impulsive but but rather um but rather uh, you know breaking these long-term patterns incrementally it's a much more simple and smooth sort of transition I see transpiring in your life. And this is going to release you of all the headaches that may come with doing something impulsive. This is going to, you know, give you more confidence to make these transitions without as much drama in the future. There's something that you've learned that you're actually having to apply. And this is what's creating this new beginning for you. So again, a lot of you could be traveling. A lot of you could be moving. A lot of you could be ending relationships and just being single, maybe you are, you know, committing to relationships where you have been single. There's something that you're doing and it's the application of the wisdom that's been acquired, okay, over this year. You're putting it to use. I really like this energy. We're going to go into the clarity, you guys. I hope this resonated with some of you. If you did, if it did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would love to see you back here next week. Um, if you'd like to follow me over to Vimeo, the link is in the description box below and I wish you luck. Bye.